Please fall firm. On the floor for the second semifinal, the visitors read the comments of Sterling Green and Central Catholic. The powers of Henry San Juan, William Valentine, the Reds, the Young Rock, the Rose Bowl. Tomorrow for the one year championship. Let's meet the teams. Of He's going to take it himself for a championship! Oh! Oh! A double play and wins it to three! Turn it to the end zone. What a catch! The guy is on touchdown!
Jim Tires for the second semifinal. Brian Blake from Mount Sterling, Eric Brady. Along the first baseline from Mount Sterling, Dave Phelps. And along the third baseline from Glenn Carbon, Jim Friel. As the players and coaches wish each other good luck on the field, the IHSA, their directors and members will extend to help sportsmanship to all athletes, coaches, students, parents, and sectors. We request for cooperation by supporting our participants and officials in a positive manner. Do what's right. It is time for semifinal game number two in class 1A here in Peoria, Illinois, and it will match the Newman Central Catholic Comets against the Henry Sinatwine Mallards. And hi again, everybody. Dave Bernhardt along with Hall of Fame coach Mark Lindo. We already had game number one completed, and a beauty it was. Waterloo Jabot knocking off Goreville by a 7-6 score. Now, we had talked before that game, Mark, about how both of those teams had made numerous appearances here in Peoria. But on the flip side, this game, first time that Henry Snatchwine has been in the Final Four, and we can say the same for Newman Central Catholic. Yeah, absolutely, Dave, and both teams are good turnouts of fans on either side. You can tell that each team's taking home a trophy. Who's going to get the big one? The opportunity for it, we will find out hopefully in the next couple hours. And we have a really nice pitching matchup to look at here today. Both teams waited around a while, right, for the first game, but should be ready to go. Let's take a look at the starting batting order for Newman Central Catholic. Leading it off to be Garrett Motsnick. He's a freshman. Kyle Wolf will do the pitching. Dave Brendan Tunick bats third. The middle part of the order is Jason Johns, Nolan Britt, Garrett Wolf. Joe Oswald, Isaiah Williams, and Daniel Kelly round out the batting order for head coach Kenny Kerner. On the flip side, for the Henry Sinatchwine Mallards, they are on the field. They are the home team, the outfield of Preston Rowe, Mason Ganeri, and Jacob Miller. And the infield, along third to first, Zach Barnes, Carson Rowe, Tegan Williams, Lance Kieswetter, Colton Williams behind the plate. We talked about a pitching matchup. Mason Johnson, the lefty, will get the ball for Henry Sinatchwine. Mason Johnson, a good one, a senior, about six foot one. Has a nice array of pitches. We'll see probably two or three different pitches from him. He comes in with a six and one record, 62 innings pitched, a sparkling 1.92 earned run average, 57 punch outs, 24 base on balls. As we get ready to go to call the first pitch of the second semifinal, the Hall of Fame voice of the IHSA, my partner Dave Bernhardt. Here we go. Thank you very much, Mark Winter, to face Jabot for the state title tomorrow. Leading it off will be Garrett Motznick. He said a freshman shortstop, Monsnick hitting 254 on the season. He has scored 38 runs. That's number two on the team. And Johnson delivers. He was accounted one and one. 59150 freshman, but he knows how to handle a bet. He can bump the ball, he can hit the ball the other way. Johnson takes a little bit off that one. Looking to catcher Colton Williams. And he gets him looking. That ball was so slow, it might look like it may have been going backwards, but it's enough to freeze Motzik for out number one. 58 strikeout to lead things off. He'll throw a fastball in the mid to high 70s, but throws a slider and a change. That was a breaking ball. He went back door against the right-handed hitter, hit the outside edge, and gets the call for the first out. I'll bring up Kyle Wolf. First pitch swinging. Three hopper out to Tegan Williams, two gone. Really efficient start so far for Mason Johnson. Just pound the zone, be around, put the baseball in the hands of your defense. Left-handed pitcher, hold runners on well. Just take away the running game, and you can be very effective. I'll bring up number 27, Brendan Tunick. Tunick headed to Notre Dame. 17 home runs this season for Tunick. That's an awful lot of long balls. He has school records, season records of home runs, RBIs, runs, and pitching wins. We'll see Tunick on the mound tomorrow. He could throw too many pitches in Monday's super sectional win. He does it with a stick as well, obviously, and they're pitching him very carefully here. It's 3 0. Oh. Five tool player. That means he can hit, hit with power, run the bases, throws the ball extremely well, fields, runs. He does it all. That's why he's going to go to Notre Dame. Well, there you saw an intentional, intentional walk. I don't care what you say. The catcher wasn't standing up, but they were not going to pitch to Brendan Tunick. 
Bases loaded, they or bases empty. They did not want him to score a run by himself on a long ball. I bring up the catcher Jason Johns. John, six foot senior, 284 average. He's driven in 29 runs this year, and that is second behind Tunic. There's that left handed move we had mentioned earlier. That was not his best move. Tunic extends his lead just a little bit more. Tunic will run. He has 24 stolen bases. One of the top players in the entire state of Illinois. Prep Baseball Report ranks him in their top 10. Pretty good lead. He'll walk back, back easily. He'll stretch it just a bit there. He holds. Pitch to Johns. This is outside. Straight change there. Turned that ball over. Ran a little bit to the outside, enough to get off the dish. There he goes. Hitting behind the runner and fouled onto the berm. That will scatter the Jabot Hawks. Winners about an hour ago over Dorville. They, they had to hang on. <laughs> Dorville left the bases loaded with two outs at the bottom of the seventh inning. One and two to Johns. Another off speed. Interesting tunic went on the one one pitch then was fouled off did not choose to go on the one two pitch. I think you'll put him in motion here. There he goes. Outside throw down 25th stone base of the year for Brendan tunic and now he's in scoring position. And part of that was just guessing off speed pitch. We've mentioned a slider and a changeup. One and two, he had fouled off a fastball, so you think you're going to get off speed next, and that's exactly what happened. They guessed right. Two and two to Johns. Slow curveball, and this just foul. So the rally caps and the Newman. Dugout are going to have to reload right here. The entire team standing up at the edge of the dugout, flipping those caps. Are there some runs on those caps? Well, there have been this. <laughs> there season, have yes. been this year, no doubt. <laughs> been really a storybook run here. There goes Tunic breaking for third. The throw will not be in time, but the strikeout at home plate. So Johns will go down, and that will end the threat. Runner left to board. We go to the bottom of the first. The Mallards will come to the plate. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Henry Sinatchwein Mallards, 22 and 6 in the season under head coach Max Kerbach in his fifth year. 75 wins, 55 losses. Take a look at their batting order today. It'll be Mason Ganeri to lead things off. Preston Rowe, the left fielder, bats second. Colton Williams, big power hitter for the Mallards. He'll bat third. Lance Keyswetter, we will see him hit. Tomorrow, we will see him pitch. Mason Johnson and Carson Rowe, the middle part of the Henry Sinatchewine order. Zach Barnes, along with Jacob Miller, and Tegan Williams, catcher, will round out the batting order. Defensively for Newman Central Catholic, the outfield of Joe Oswald. Brendan Tunick and Daniel Kelly. The infield of Garrett Wolf, Garrett Motznick. Over on the left side, Nolan Britt and Isaiah Williams. Jason Johns is behind the plate. And the older brother of the Wolves, Kyle Wolf, on the mound for the Comets. Kyle's a six foot, 150 pound senior. He's pitched in 15 baseball games, eight and one record. 55 innings pitch. He's allowed 56 hits on the season, relatively high, but a sparkling earned run average of 1.0. 4-0, 48 punch outs in those 55 innings. Getting it started here for Henry Snatchwine will be Mason Garrett, junior center fielder. 
He's going to go after the first pitch line drive hooked right into the glove of Nolan Britt. One gone. Nolan Britt had him played perfectly. He was playing by the edge of the outfield grass where the dirt meets the grass. Softly hit line drive right at him. One pitch, one out. Preston Rowe, right handed hitting left fielder. Kyle Wolf on the delivery, and again, first pitch swinging. And Johns will let that just squirt foul behind him. Garrett Wolf at third base up inside the cutout area between dirt and grass, anticipating a would be bunt. If Rowe can get the barrel out in front of him at all, he has a big hole to hit it through that 5 6 side on the left side of the field. A little bit high. Not big offensive numbers individually for Henry Snatchwine, though the Mallards have won their last eight games. This ball's hit hard down the left field line, hooking and just foul. Yeah, their last loss was against Gridley. Four to three way back in May 5th or May 6th. So they're on a nice little roll. They had won five in a row before that. So the Mallards with a nice run late. Here in the playoffs, they have really done the job defensively and with their pitching staff. That's where the strength lies with this team. In fact, in the five playoff games, Henry Snatchwine has only allowed four runs. Count one and two to row. Well, you see what a number two hitter looks like. Nearly misses down the left field side, then he'll take an outside pitch to the right side. Up there, a hacking and a slashing. Wolf paints the outside corner and gets the called strikeout. You know, Wolf, he won't overpower him, but a little bit deceptive. He drops down just a little bit, hides the baseball to the last second, makes it very difficult for hitters to track the ball. Walt Williams will step in. Williams, a senior, 388 batting average, 14 doubles, couple of home runs. The thing, and I'll, I'll mention after this pitch here by Wolf, big, slow breaking ball falls in there. He starts his delivery, and you think he's going to come sidearm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just with his body, his legs, and then all of a sudden the ball appears where you're not expecting it to your point, and he hides the ball so well. This one may take a while to come down. Oh, that's a nice grab right there from Garrett Wolf. Boy, you talk about staying with it. A one, two, three inning. Kyle Wolf, Brothers Wolf, get the job done here in the first. After one, our second class 1A semifinal. We have no score. You're watching live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSNetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. Well, Newman trying to get on the board here early. Their first ever tournament appearance. They lost consecutive years super sectionals, right? So they've been close but not been able to get to Peoria, but they're here today with a chance to win a semifinal game and get to the state championship. In fact, you trace the history of Newman Central Catholic, of course, the, the great program in football. Mm -hmm. it, it really comes as a surprise that this is the first appearance ever in the state finals. And Roma at 215 out of Whiteside County and playing, of course, in the Three Rivers Athletic Conference. Out of Sterling. And I believe. I 
thought they had played Sterling this year, but I do not see that on their schedule. Yeah, that was. Uh, well, there it is. May 3rd. May 3rd. I missed it. Okay. 24 to 3 win, by yep. the way. Big rivals, of course, in town. 5 6 7 here as we start the second inning. Nolan Britt, Garrett Wolf, and Joe Oswald. Coming off the left handed offerings of Mason Johnson. Saw Garrett Wolf with that play. Just a freshman. And pop up in the infield looking into the sun. He did get a little break because we did have some clouds that have come in here. First game today. That ball's hit high. That ball is hit driving the left fielder back. Settling underneath it is Preston Rowe. And underneath it just a bit. Nolan Britt. And here is Garrett Wolf, freshman. In fact, after the super sectional win, uh, Kyle Wolf, the, of course, his older brother, his senior brother, everybody's celebrating. <laughs> and what do you do? You know, you celebrate, then you go down the line and huddle up with your team. Right. Older brother. Kyle picked up younger brother Garrett and carried him all the way out. That's awesome. To that huddle. That's pretty cool. Memory of a lifetime. Well, and for Kyle Wolf as well, he had has been able to play with both his younger brother and older brother. And a running catch, a little bit of a jump from Tegan Williams for the second out. Tegan Williams, he heard that ball off the bat. Good reaction. Went drop step with his right foot, went right to where the ball was coming and caught that at the apex of his jump. Really solid catch, but he had a beat on that the entire way. Joe Oswald will now step in. Johnson working quickly and efficiently. That high leg kick fouled straight back. As well, a 5'10 sophomore. It's been a competition going on in the Oswald family for a while. Not with a younger brother or younger sister, but with his mom, Debbie Kelly. Well, Debbie's the volleyball coach at Newman. She's been the head coach there for 24 years. Girls volleyball, boys baseball, never been to a state final. So it was a competition between those two. Debbie got there this year, and Joe was just fine with that because he's here this year. Goes down on that one, and that'll be a 1-2-3 inning for Mason Johnson. Let's head to the bottom of the second, scoreless. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. One thirty on a Friday afternoon, 93 degrees in downtown Peoria. Not much breeze to speak up, but enough to make sure it's not intolerable. And it is semifinal baseball here in Class 1A. We'll have 2A to follow a little bit later. But leading it off here will be Lance Keyswetter, followed by Mason Johnson and Carson Rowe for Henry Snatchwine. On the hill is Kyle Wolf for Central Catholic. He's what a big swing and why not 400 average leads a team 29 RBIs the same 
nine doubles four home runs all team leading numbers for the junior good pitch right there from Wolf he's what are a strong person I tell you what he squats 400 deadlifts 500 so that means he can move some iron it's this one well to right center field giving a little bit of ground is Daniel Kelly He'll reverse and make the catch near the warning track. That ball was hit well. Good adjustment by Kelly. Drop step to his right. Ball went to his left to the foul line side just a bit. So he changed directions. Drop step right. Drop step left. Got underneath the baseball. Made a solid catch with a high sky. Mason Johnson, left-handed hitting pitcher. Pitcher today, also a first baseman. 200 average on the season. Hits out of the five hole. Oh, that's a spinner to third. Garrett Wolf can't find the handle. Garrett Wolf may not have a slower rolling ball coming to him, try to rush it just a little bit. And he'll be picking up an error. That ball was almost dead in the grass. Garrett Wolf looked up to see if he had time, which he did, and just didn't corral the baseball. First pitch running is Johnson to throw down. Stolen base and runner in scoring position. Mason Johnson picks up that stolen base, his 12th of the season. Got to run for fun, stay aggressive. Mallards with a big turnout down the third base side, third base line of fans. This ball's hit just over the reach of Garrett Wolf. Down the left field line. Coming in to score, Mason Johnson and Henry Sinatchwine with the first lead of this game. Well, Johnson's stolen base put him in scoring position to easily score on that laced base hit down the left field line. First ball hunting, and he got it and turned it around. So they take advantage of the error to score their first run. Bring up Zach Barnes. Barnes, third baseman. How about that stolen base from Mason Johnson on the first pitch yep. he had available? That set him up. Zach Barnes, the junior, with 11 runs batted in. No extra base hits this season. Carson Rowe at first. Pop up very short right center. Tunick will make the catch for the second out. And the number eight hitter in Jacob Miller. Miller just a freshman. Throw the lead at first. As that weight headed towards second, he'll stay there. You know, the one thing we've seen already here in these first two games, or early in this one, is both teams will come out of their dugout swinging the bats. Yeah, very aggressive. Early in the game, yes. Ooh, jumping over first base. I don't know whether he was thinking about going, but Carson Rowe was dancing, and he's actually... Lucky that Wolf didn't go over there because he was definitely off balance. <laughs> and would have been a pretty easy target for Wolf, who now will go over there. There he goes now. Throw. Good one. Unable to handle it, though. There's Motznik. Another stolen base, second of the inning here. For the Mallards. I really like Max Kerbach, first year head coach, playing a very aggressive style. Catch us if you can on the bases. Eastern Illinois graduate, coached basketball for about 14 years, now has his team in the state semis with a lead. Miller just gets a piece of it and sends it back.
Already one in, looking for another with two outs here in the second. Got him swinging. The run crosses the plate. Reaching on an error, a stolen base, and an RBI single from Carson Rowe. That's enough to get Henry Sinatrawine a 1 nothing lead after two. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. How to fit in. How to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. Top of the third inning as the head coach, and he's also a third base coach. Kenny Kerner, his third year for Newman Central Catholic, won the walk to third base. How about this? He played for IHBCA, it's an only baseball coach association, high school baseball coach association, Hall of Famer Jim Workman, when Kerner was a player at Tri Point. Well, then he went to Only Central for a while, played for a Hall of Fame coach, Dennis Conley. And in that year, by the way, Kenny Kerner was number two in the nation in saves. So if you play for a couple of Hall of Famers, I think you're going to pick up a few tips of the trade. Here's Isaiah Williams to lead things off here in the top of the third inning. Williams, first baseman, followed by Daniel Kelly, then back to the top of the order and Grant Monsting. And his Newman team was only the number three seed in their own sectional. Yet they come out, and here they are in the state semis. So seating is somewhat correct, but not always. Yeah, they, they weren't too happy about no. that either. It, kind of a chip on their shoulder about picking up that three seed. Williams, just a 147 hitter, chops it to the right side. Off the glove of Keyswitter at first base. The leadoff man aboard here in the top of the third inning. Well, you can see how hard this ground is, even though they watered it between games. That took Keyswater by surprise. It'll go down as an infield single. But that ball really jumped up on him, and Keyswater had to hesitate for a moment. He didn't know that Tegan Williams might have had a play, the second baseman behind him. Yeah, your instinct to go after the baseball. Mason Johnson was doing his job getting over to cover first base as the pitcher but falling away and that ball would have got to Williams I believe at second base you're correct. Daniel Kelly at the plate. Hits in the nine spot. <clears throat> Kelly missed first half the season or so. Swings and misses at this one. Count 0 and 2 because of an injury he suffered at the end of his wrestling season but He's come on. They put him down the nine spot. It's just kind of solidify the lineup. Now, it doesn't have great offensive numbers there, but just basically becomes a second leadoff hitter. And he hits this one hard, and that's a through for a base hit. Pulling up at second base will be Williams. First two batters reach on base hits here for the Comets. Well, he barreled that ball. She just knocked that ball right past the shortstop with authority. Turned a fastball around. Carson Rowe had no chance but to watch it scoop by him into center field. And the table is set right now. And that brings us back to the top and Garrett Motznick. Looking to bunt in the air and back into the screen. If you get it once, you should get it again. He tried to punch that ball instead of catch the ball with the barrel of bat. Show it early, no secrets. Get the ball down and make the defense make a play. Advance the runners. You know, this team, Newman Central Catholic, only has six sacrifices this season. A couple of bunt attempts that Motznick, the freshman, probably wishes he had back. Yeah, that was a ball out of the zone. So he chased that bunt attempt. First one he punched at, that one he bunted a would-have-been ball. Oh, 
Monsnick had to wait for that one. That's the pitch that got him out on strikes the first time up. Well, one of the secrets of success, at least for Newman Central Catholic, is the bottom of the order. It's really picked it up in the postseason. That's where we are right now. Eight, nine, got your base hits, turning it over to the top. Called straight back. He's really in swing mode right now. He's two bunt attempts, two foul balls. I think you throw a ball out of the zone right now if you're Johnson, you might get him to fish. They're gonna fight that one off right in on the knuckles. Mason Johnson very efficient with his pitches the first two innings. And he's into a pitch count here. This is the fifth pitch, or sixth this will be, that Mosnick will have seen. Yet the count's just 0-2. Right up the middle it goes. Charging hard is Ganeri, the center fielder, being waved around third is Williams. Here's the throw, not in time. <laughs> I'm laughing because there was a stop sign, no doubt about it, by head coach Kenny Kerner. So when the run scored, he kind of put his hand up like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> you know, I actually think the catcher, Colton Williams, may have been fooled just a little bit by that very thing because he really didn't react like he had a runner bearing down on him. We're tied at one. RBI single <clears throat> from Motsnik, his 14th run band in of the year. At the plate, Kyle Wolf. His bunt attempt will go foul. Ah, the lost art of bunting. I know that drives you and I nuts when we don't see bunts executed by anybody, any level. Exactly. <clears throat> Slow breaking ball. Chance for two. Step in the bag, Williams. Throw to first. He's one of the knockdown. Two right there. Advance the runner to third. Two big outs, though. Well, that will go as a 1-4-3 double play because the pitcher did indeed deflect that. Johnson, which slowed that ball and directed it right toward the second base of Williams. Took him right to the base, left foot on the bag. Easy throw over, beats, his, beats the double play runner by two or three steps easily. See whether they pitch to Brendan Tunick here. He had a four-pitch walk his first time. With the outside edge here on pitch number one. Takes a big cut at it. I mean, just because that was a healthy swing, yeah, wasn't it? It was. Well, oh. he's trying out for the area code games later this month. Already made Team USA, you mentioned, number nine prospect in this class. All stater last year. They went after him with three straight pitches. This one fouled back. Williams looks up, and it's about halfway up here on the lower level. There's a lot of red in this park, and that would be Henry Sinatchwine. Their uniforms today may be black, but the fans are decked in red. And the fans are out, and I mean that in more than <laughs> one way at 93 degrees. 0 2 to Tunic. Skies this one left field row. Drifts. And will make the catch. One run crosses the plate. Could have been worse. Double play helped matters out. But we'll go to the bottom of the third. And we're all tied up in one here in your class 1A semifinal. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. 
on the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. Participate! Today's game is available for download. Just click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer. Dave Bernhardt, Mark Lindo, great day to play baseball in Central Illinois. Next week we'll be in Joliet, Class 3A and 4A. 14 more games to go. IHSA baseball. How about that? Yeah, that's fun. That's sad. Right? Uh, yeah, both. For a exactly. Long season. Number nine hitter Tegan Williams will lead things off here for the Henry Sinatwine Mallards. On the mound, Kyle Wolf peers over that glove, and here he comes. Souvenir on the concourse for all those folks that are not brave enough to get out in the sunshine. I think it's plenty warm in the shade as well. Yeah. <laughs> we we're talking about Max Kerbach, the head coach for Henry Sinatchwine. He's had success at the junior high level. He was at Casey Westfield, second in the state. He won a sectional four regionals during his time there. Yeah, and as a baseball coach here, he started 10 and 13 his first year, then 10 and 16, had a winning record in 21. Then 22 got a 20 win season. Then here in 23, he's got his team in the state semis with 22 and 6 record. Now, play for two, Mason Gnarney. Mason Gnarney lined out to second his first time up, left handed hitter. Looks at that big breaking pitch that drops right in there. Gnarney, just looking from up high here, just looks like a leadoff hitter to me. Handles the bat really well. Wolf's delivery. Inside out swing, dropping fast, but not fast enough. Joe Oswald is there for the second out of the inning. Right on cue, he goes inside out, but Oswald with a good jump on that ball. Brings us to Preston Rowe, a strikeout victim in the first inning. Three strikeouts for Wolf. Off the end of the bat, getting right into the glove. Nolan Britt, that is a very quick bottom half of the third inning. Well, we have played a full three. We have two runs on the board, one apiece as we go to the fourth. Comets and the Mallards here on the NFHS Network. Hey, conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! My kid heard that solo! You see my kid? Yeah! Come on! This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Great to have you here with us on the NFHS Network. And today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network, NFHS Network live mobile app. That's for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. Boy, we've had two good ones here. A game and a half, right? First one, seven to six. Jabot knocking off Goreville. And here in this one, Played 1 1 after three, a very quickly paced game in the first three innings. At Goreville in that first semifinal, they scored two runs in the bottom of the seventh, left the bases loaded. As that one went down to the final pitch of the game. Jason Johns to lead things off here to start fourth inning for the Comets from Central Catholic. John struck out his first time. A couple of strikeouts in the first inning for Mason Johnson. That's his total for the game. 
He battled some sickness earlier in the year, right? Something didn't agree with him food poisoning wise? Yeah, that's that's tough, crazy, right? yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, off of Johnson kicks right to Williams. He can't handle it. I hope it wasn't you that cooked for him. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so a base hit to lead things off here for Johns. Courtesy runner, Johns a catcher. Try to catch a number here. I believe running is Caleb Donna over at first base. Big swing from Britt. Johnson looking right at Donna. Donna can choose to go on the first move if they put him in motion. Usually one and one's not a good count. Two and one usually better. Had him going back that time, didn't he? You know, here's an interesting case, right, for Caleb Donna. He's 6'1 junior. He's had two at bats this season. He scored 11 runs. So you talk about yeah. somebody that knows his role. Yeah. I shouldn't be telling stories like this, but we had a. Now, you, now, now I'm intrigued. Okay, we had a courtesy runner one year that I'm not kidding. He scored 47 runs, but. We used to run him for the pitcher and catcher the same game. <laughs> and I told you I should have And nobody ever said anything. We just say, Jerry, go. Jerry, go. <laughs> so, so here's my thought. I'm thinking, did you switch, like, jerseys? No. <laughs> we didn't try to hide it one bit. <laughs> so I could tell that story now. They yes. <laughs> Counts two and two. Now full to Britt. Now there's going to be a throw over here. No. Hard to left field. Row along the line. The lefty uses that glove right on the line to make the catch. Well, that ball was hit hard. Preston Rowe off the sound. Got to the line and made a nice running catch. Now play for three, Garrett Wolf. Garrett Wolf takes a long look down at his head coach at third base. That's Kenny Kerner. Corner outfielders are shading to their respective lines. Oh, they've got him picked. Got him. There's that left hand move we talked about. That was his best move of the day. Donna was leaning, Donna was going to be going. You know, it's so often you see left-handed pitchers at this level. They see, they're looking right at the runner, obviously. They know as soon as they pick up their leg, I've got this guy. Yeah. And then they rush or bounce the ball in. That was just as smooth as could be from Mason Johnson. Second out of the inning. And if you're Caleb Donna, once you know you're picked, instead of going back to the base and getting tagged out, you just try to outrun the baseball and force a throw to second. And that becomes a big pickoff right here with the walk to Garrett Wolf. Now play for nine, Joe Oswald. Joe Oswald, strikeout victim. Three strikeouts for Mason Johnson. Oswald, 155 pounds sophomore, so. See some young 
talent in this Class A tournament. Grant Canary took a step back. He'll come in, make the catch, and finish out this inning. So leadoff single he is knocked off the bases. A walk is left stranded. Can you believe it when I say we're halfway home in this one? Tied at one. Academy Sports and Outdoors has something for everyone in your family. From top sports brands to backyard cooking or the best in the outdoors, the North Face, Yeti, Columbia, or Magellan Outdoors, Academy has it all. Whether you're celebrating familiar traditions or exploring new ones, we've got what you need in here to have fun out there. Start your next adventure and make lifelong family memories at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Download our app or shop at academy.com. Henry Sinatchwine will look to put a point on the board here. They scored in the second inning. Certainly Newman came back in the third with one of their own. Only oh, five hits on the day. Only, only one hit, yeah, for the Mallards so far. So they got to start to barrel up some baseballs, but keeping them off balance. Kyle Wolf has did a good job using his whole repertoire of pitches, mixing things up, moving things around. Colton Williams loaded up on this one. Skies it to left field. Joe Oswald right near the line. One pitch, one out. It's a big man knocked down in the order there. Colton Williams came into this game. 388 average, 14 doubles and a couple of home runs. That brings us to Lance Keysweater. Keysweater follows him. I mentioned his numbers earlier. 400 average, nine doubles, four home runs, 29 runs batted in. This will be an inning to do some damage against Kyle Wolf. Keyswetter will go after the first pitch. Keyswetter is a good one. Just a junior. Well built, strong, really good power in his legs. Three sport athlete. We'll see him on the mound in either the third place game or the championship game tomorrow. And he has had a spectacular postseason towing the rubber. He's pitched in four of their five games. Super sectional game. He was over 100 pitches. That's why he's not eligible today. That was on Monday. Two one pitch. He's what are hung in there as long as he could. He said, OK, this one's not going to break any farther. Three balls and a strike. Johnson on deck. He's what a rips this one in the left field. One out single from Lance Keyswetter. Boy, he throw his hands at that one. He kept his hands back, head down, just barreled that baseball, just laced it past third baseman Garrett Wolf. Not a chance as that ball got off the bat in a hurry. Johnson, the left hander batter's box, stares down at Max Kerbach at third base. Short lead from Keyswetter. Softly hit Johnson and drifting out. Second baseman Nolan Britt for the second out of the inning. Keyswetter is in a not if, but when will he run with two outs here and try to get himself into scoring position. Except we might have a pinch runner here. Interesting. This will indeed be a pinch runner, and it will be Nico Yi. So now do we see some action here?
He runs for Keith Sweater with two outs. He's going to run on the first pitch. Line oh, drive right into the glove of Garrett Wolf, and it almost took his glove off his hand. He'll make the catch for the third out as Carson Rowe hit that ball right on the screws. One hit in the inning. Runner stranded at first. Four innings in the books. 1-1. One, one. The Comets and the Mallards. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player to get your digital copy today. Dozer Park in Peoria along with Mark Lindo. I'm Dave Bernhardt on our NFHS Network crew bringing you these 1A and 2A semifinals today. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Get things started at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning for Consolation Games. Coming up later, not too much later, we'll start 2A play. It'll be DePaul College Prep taking on Columbia and Joliet Catholic Academy defending state champs in 2A to play Quincy Notre Dame. Well, that comes your way here on the NFHS Network. Leaking it off in the fifth inning. The man who scored the only run of the game for Newman Central Catholic, this is Isaiah Williams. Hit a high chopping single off the glove of Keysweater at first base and eventually came around to score on a single from Garrett Motznick. That was left-hander Mason Johnson's 70th pitch of the baseball game. On the other side, really efficient so far for Kyle Wolf, who's only thrown 37 pitches, 30 of them for strikes. Center field, shallow center field is Ganeri. One gone. So 37 John, pitches in four innings for yeah, Wolf. Okay. That's pretty efficient, yes. Now, play for two, Daniel Kelly. Daniel Kelly singled part of that run scoring inning in the third. Number nine hitter will take pitch in the outside corner. 30 of 37 pitches for Wolf. <laughs> They've been in the strike zone. Very quickly here, Johnson ahead of Kelly. Stays alive. Outfield playing straight away. Kelly will go down swinging for out number two. Fourth strikeout for Johnson. To the top of the order in Motznik. This one's got all the making of another one run game like we had in the first semifinal. I feel somewhere along the way, there's going to be some small ball here. Yep. It's going to change this thing around. Well, these two teams are not bashful about swinging. If it's in there, they're going to swing. Hmm, Keyswater gave up on that pretty early. Of course, he was looking right into the sun, but that ball actually tipped off the railing. Right there, the little walkway down near the tarp that takes you into the dugout area. Well, Mason Johnson just has allowed one base on balls. Thank you. And Kyle Wolf has allowed zero on his side. That's why we have a game moving right along. That's why we have a low scoring game. You know, neither one of these pitchers are the respective team's <clears throat> aces. They are throwing it like they are today. Chance for Barnes right there by the bag. One, two, three inning. 
Mason Johnson cruising. And the same can be said for Kyle Wolf. That's why we go to the bottom of the fifth, tied at one. Waterloo Jabot awaits the winner of this one. It would be our second game tomorrow morning on the final day of baseball for Class 1A and 2A. That for the 1A championship. Seven to six winners today earlier over Goreville. Kyle Wolf, 37 pitches, 30 strikes. He'll face the bottom three in the order for Henry Sinatwine. That's Zach Barnes, Jacob Miller, Tegan Williams. Yeah, pace for what? A under 70, 70 pitch complete game. If he gets, that's amazing. You know, on the other side for Henry Sinatwine, you might say, well, you know, maybe you should start taking a few pitches. But when you're pumping the zone like that. Yeah, 30 out of 37, you can't take any pitches. First one straight back a little higher. It may have had a chance to reach us up here in the second level of Dozer Park. And if it did that. I would have made an error. Would have only been the second of the game. Just long, <laughs> just long as you wouldn't have deflected it into my face. <laughs> yeah, how about a well-played game this has been, huh? Pitchers have been dealing, just one error. There's a chopper to short. Mostick has to wait for it. Gets him easily. One gone to Jacob Miller. Well, you mentioned Mostick, only a freshman. I mean, think how that one, that young man will handle the middle of their infield for the next three years. <laughs> how about just the comfort? Yes. In knowing that. Now he's at shortstop today, but you know what his nickname, Mostick's nickname is the plug. Because he can go everywhere, huh? Yeah. You know, and his, his uncle <clears throat> is Danny Mostick. He's a local Sterling legend. Yep. And you know, he played with Michael Jordan when Michael Jordan played double A ball at Birmingham. Now that's a story to tell. I guess say he's got some stories, huh? Yep. Miller down on the count, no balls and two strikes. A little looper. Run down by Tunic. I thought that mountain might get down to and he just kept on coming, made it look easy. Oswald in left field had a little beat on it, but Tunic, he just, just glide to the baseball, made that catch in stride as it was gonna split the gap between left and center field. You know, and, and folks that are watching here in person or seen him throughout the year, and we haven't seen him on the mound yet here in this tournament, you can just see he's a ball player and why Notre Dame is gonna get a good one. That's another quick inning. The bouncer to Garrett Wolf. One, two, three, five in a row, retired by Kyle Wolf. <laughs> We're already headed to the sixth. One one game winner to the state championship game tomorrow. What rhymes with great? Participate. Where does greatness start? Here, in the classroom. On the stage. In the pool. On the field. Where will your greatness take you? To better grades. To more friends. Yeah! Be great. The innocence of youth. Is there anything any better? But soon they'll be in high school and facing all the same challenges you faced. How to make friends. 
how to fit in, how to be cool. We want our children to have everything they'll need to live fulfilling and productive lives. Make sure the kids in your family are among the more than 12 million participants in America who take part in high school sports or activities. High school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games. One destination, that's NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. I'm already a subscriber. Likewise. All right. All right. Two, three, four here as we start at the top of the sixth inning. Coach Lindo, what's it going to take here for either one of these teams to break through? It's going to take one big hit. That's an easy one. It's going to take one misplay defensively. Sometimes it's not what you do, but a mistake that somebody makes, whether it be mental or physical. But you got to get a leadoff man on base right here if you are Newman. Kyle Wolf grounded out to second. Then he bounced into a 1-4-3 double play. Hits this one right on the nose. One hop taken by Carson Rowe. Measures, throws, one gone. <laughs> Bring up Brendan Tunick. And here again, it will be very interesting to how they pitch the Tunick. It was pretty much an intentional walk his first time up in the first inning with two outs. He had a runner on base. Runner at third. He flew out to left. They pitched to him. Just misses on that one. So I'm curious, you know, one, yeah, the, one swing, 17 home runs in the season for Tunic. He's definitely pitching away from him, so he cannot turn on the baseball. He's right up on that plate, too. You have a 2 0 count. Your on base percentage goes up to about 700 with a 2 0 count. That's pretty amazing. Big cut there by Tunick. Two and one now. Good location. Ball and two strikes, or make that two and two. Yeah, left-handed, he hit the outside corner. Tunick tried to pull it. He gets some swinging. Johnson took something off, bent it a little bit. Boy, that's a big, big yes. strikeout right there. We're getting to the time of the ball game where every batter, every pitch is going to become more and more important. Jason Johns with two outs. And look at look at Johnson. He he was almost ready to throw that ball before Johns even walked into the box. He wants to keep working. Yeah, and there's there's no walking around. He's staying on that rubber. It's a throw back from Williams. Johns hits this ball well to center. Run down by Mason Ganeri. Another one, two, three inning. That's seven in a row retired by Mason Johnson. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Run for the lead for Henry Sinatchewan. live coverage of the IHSA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school playoff action. And you know today's game is also available for download. Click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of this event right to your computer. 
So you asked me the top of the inning, what's it going to take? And I said, getting a leadoff man on. So now it's a Mallard's turn to try to get something going early on. It might be a bunt. It might be a misplay. It might be a, a funny kind of hop. We'll see what happens to lead to what would be the lead or winning run for either team. You know, when a coach gets his lineup, he puts his batting order together. He says, I, I, need, I need my guys, the right guys coming up at the right time of the game. Well, he's at the top of his order right now with Mason Ganeri, the leadoff hitter for the Mallards, and Kyle Wolf delivers. Henry Sinatrawine, 22 wins, six losses this season. First time in school history that Henry Sinatrawine will take home a trophy in a team sport. You know, and, the, and you... 20 years from now, you will not be able to take that away. Never. These guys wearing the black jerseys. One one pitch to Gennari. He'll stare it down. Two and one. And we had our 40th anniversary of our 83 state championship team. We had a really good turnout, and the stories that were told were like it just happened yesterday. The way the guys remembered things. Boy, breaking back. Oh, they'll get him. Breaking back was Britt. He was fooled by it, short hopped it, made the throw. Isaiah Williams at first base hung with it as Ganeri was flying down the line. That was a strange play all around. Yeah, Ganeri is their fastest straightaway speed. And it was a bang, bang play. And you're right, Britt stayed with it. Williams with a really nice stretch to the outfield side, the right field side. I think they're going to discuss whether Williams came off the bag on that play. A lot of feet were happening in the same location everywhere. Eric Grady talking to our first base umpire, Dave Phelps. Jim Fredell, third base umpire, will join that conversation. Oh, they're going to call him safe. No, he said safe and it's out. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Out. Safe. Oh, out. Oh, no. <laughs> out, safe, out. Well, he knew what he meant. Yeah. And My bad, he I, said. <laughs> I think his safe call may have been like, the, the, the call yeah. will stand. Yeah. Okay. But Canary was he was running out there. Oh, yeah, that's. <laughs> Boy, Canary can fly too, can he? Yeah, he was. Oh, my goodness. Hurry. Preston Rue. He goes after that first pitch. Short, shallow center field, shortstop. Mosnick drifts back, and that's out number two. Well, it was really interesting watching the second baseman, Britt, because I, sitting up here, of course, I thought that ball was going to be something the second baseman, Britt, was going to have to go back on. Yep. He did, too. Came in and had to short hop, and he actually made a very nice play on that. And then Williams was able to hang on to the bag. Here's Colton Williams. He can lose one. A little bit low to Williams. Fourteen doubles, couple of home runs for the 388 hitter for Henry Sinatrawine. Lifts this one high. Oswald will make the catch. Second time he's caught a high fly ball off the bat of Colton Williams. Now retire the side. Eight straight. Retired by Kyle Wolf. We're going to the top of the seventh. In effect, we're going to be in extra innings right now. Tied at one. Conductor, how about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Move! My kid heard that solo!
Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app. Get that for Android, Android and Apple devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today. Start watching live games wherever you are. I hope you're with us on this one. Oh, I know you are. You just heard me say that. But. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Five, six, seven. Nolan Britt, Garrett Wolf, Joe Oswald. The only run scored in this game. Henry Sinatchwine got one in the second inning. And then right back in the top of the third, that's when Newman Central Catholic got it. And that is it. And we really haven't had many threats. No, not at all. That. Six hits on the board, only one error. And basically, not basically, we have ourselves a one inning game to the championship. Mason Johnson still delivering. That was his 68th pitch of this game. Or check that, that was a while ago. <laughs> Count now one and one to Britt. Flew out to left, lined out to left. We'll foul this one right in between two sections of fans behind the Newman dugout. One section right up against the dugout in the bright sun. The other section back in the shade. Johnson, slow curveball, fouled straight back. See, because both pitchers have done such a good job keeping the leadoff man off base, there really hasn't been much of an opportunity for bunts, bunts and runs, hits and runs, those kinds of things, because they've gotten the first out of the inning on a consistent basis. 94th pitch of this game by Johnson nearly hits Britt. Johnson gave up a couple of hits in that run scoring third inning and another one in the fourth. And zeros other than that. To center field. Ganeri has been a busy guy today. One gun. Two really fine center fielders. Ganeri really does a nice job. Obviously, Tunick's an all-stater. Both those guys can patrol their respective outfields. A straight batter retired by Johnson. Garrett Wolf reached on a walk his last time up, also lined out to second. Right fielder Jacob Miller. And Preston Rowan left field playing fairly tight to their lines. As Zachary Barnes at third base, so he's off the line. You could get a double rip right past him. Good cut from Wolf. And that will fall right down on the line on the right field side. Wolf with a one out single. So a little bit of a table set there. Now you can start to make some decisions. Are you going to run? Are you going to run and uh, run and hit or hit and run either way? But I think you really need to put some things into motion and try to be creative here. Kenny Kerner has to make those decisions for Central Catholic. He's going to bunt. Sacrifice successful for Joe Oswald. Well done. Well done on both sides of that play. And even though there was one out, people saying, "Why are you bunting?" I still I like that play. You make the defense work. You look for a misplay. You move a runner into scoring position because you're not going to steal a base. More than likely against the left-handed slants of Mason Johnson. He's already picked one off today. Garrett Wolf out at second. Max Herbach makes his way to the mound. The batter at the plate is Isaiah Williams. Williams singled in the third. He scored the only run of this game for the Comets. However, Isaiah Williams on the season is a 147 batting average. 14 hits and 95 at bats coming into this tournament. And he knows full well that that is the go ahead run here in the top of the seventh inning. So Max Kerbach breaks up his little conference. I, I'm curious as to why what he was maybe communicating with his infielders and the pitcher catcher. I'm sure he's telling his infield the same thing that every coach would lay out for a ball keep it in the infield. If you don't make a play clean, don't let the ball get the outfield grass. Outfield's moved in a little bit now. To Got to make the hitter hit the ball over your head to score the would-be lead run. 
One strike to Williams. Off the end of the bat, not a play into the stands. No balls, two strikes. Johnson with five strikeouts today. Just missed up. It's an excellent 0 2 pitch and an excellent take on 0 2. Tried to get it again. Tried to backdoor him, couldn't do it. Usually, when you go slow, you want to go low. Both those breaking balls have been slower and have been up. Very hittable, but out of the zone. Going from 0 2 to 3 and 2. Daniel Kelly is on deck. The eight and nine batters have two of the hits today for Newman Central Catholic. This is fouled straight back. That was interesting. He had 0 and 2. He went breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball. And then he went 3 2 fastball. If you thought he was going to get out of the breaking ball, you got a base open. You go back to it. How about that? 0 2 to a walk to Daniel Kelly now. So game on the line for Daniel Kelly. It's up on that knob a little bit. It's five straight balls now thrown by Johnson. He's walked three in this game, giving up five hits. Pitch count starting to climb. A little fister. Rowe. Henry Snatchline is out of the inning. Mark said earlier, it's a one inning game. One run here for Henry Snatchline in the bottom of the seventh, and they'll play in a state championship. We'll go to the bottom of number seven. We're tied at one. How about something new? You played this last year. Come on, get your head out of your sacks. Shh, we're trying to hear. Well, I'm sick and tired of hearing your kid play the wrong notes. Where's my kid solo? At least you can see your kid. Why is my kid stuck way in the back? The conductor only plays his favorite. Woo! Surrounding Henry Sinatchwine High School has come out in force here today in Peoria. Their team, the Mallards, 22 and 6 in the season, have taken it right here to the bottom of the seventh inning. Only two hits allowed today by Kyle Wolf, will face Lance Keysweater to get it started. First pitch, high in the air. They lost it in the sun, I think, for a second. That's a great play by Garrett Motznik. And just as great a play by Nolan Britt, the second baseman. He let everybody know, I don't see it. He looked up. He did not use his glove. He did not lose his bare hand. He just saw Sun. And the freshman comes from the shortstop area to, to catch that ball halfway, equidistant between first and second. Really good play. Mason Johnson. Look at a next pitch high. Boy, I can't get over how... It'll go down in the scorebook as you know, pop up to six, right? Pop up to shortstop. But how good of a play that was on both parts. Yes. Britton who immediately hit in. See, look how far, you know, when you look at your shortstop to where that second base is, that's a long way for a shortstop to go and a weird angle to make a catch. Johnson today reached on there. He scored the only Henry Sinatrine run in the second inning. Came home on a 
single by Carson Rowe. You get Kieswetter lead off the inning. That's a huge out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was looking to yes. do one thing. Took a great swing at it. Yeah, he just, just got underneath it just a bit. Couldn't stay on top of the baseball because he was looking to, to drive a gap shot. Two one pitch. Ball hit to right. Kelly is there. Two gone. That is ten straight. Retired by Kyle Wolf. Carson Rowe, the only RBI of the day, one of only two hits on the day, will come to bat with two outs. Rowe has gone to the third base side twice. And a single down the left field line, then lined out to the third baseman. Now he's going to battle back from an 0 2 count. He'll lace this one up the middle. Mallards have the winning run at first base. Staying alive. Kept his hands back. Kept his hands back. Kept his hands back. Waited, waited, waited to let the ball get deep. He just laced that one right back up the middle. Mostic couldn't get to that one. Outfield moves back now. Anything over their head would be a game winner. Zach Barnes at the plate. Good secondary lead there from Rowe. I think Wolf, that was a high fastball on purpose to try to get the catcher up and ready to throw on a would be steal. This one's going to be a base hit to right field. Rowe rounds second, being held there. And he's got to scramble back to second and just beats the diving tag attempt from Mochnik. Good throw behind right there by Kelly. Going just a little bit too far was Rowe. I think Coach Kerbach wanted him coming the whole way, but he didn't. Plays in front of him. You got to pick up the coach. Very fortunate to get back. Kenny Kerner will come to the mound. The winning run stands at second base in the form of Carson Rowe. Jacob Miller will hit next. Two of the four hits in this game for Henry Sinatrawine have come in the last two batters. Miller, 17 runs batted in, 257 average today, 0 for 2. A strikeout and a flyout. Only 60 pitches thrown by Wolf, and he's one pitch away. I'm either getting out of it or picking up a loss. Yeah, it's as efficient as you can possibly be from a pitch count standpoint. Row at second. Pretty good lead there. And they'll drive him back. So important. He gets a good secondary lead, gets his movement toward third base, so he has momentum going toward third and home on the base hit. This is 2 0. Miller looks for a sign. I don't, uh, think, I don't think there's any sign besides uh, give me a knock, give me a base hit. 10 straight been retired by Wolf. But now he's been in the stretch for the last three hitters, or last two hitters, we should say. Up the middle, down, Tunic charges. He can't handle it. Henry Sinatrawine will win it. No 
nobody on. Two out, bottom of the seventh inning. Kyle Wolf had retired 10 straight batters. Single, single, single from your six, seven, and eight hitters. Jacob Miller's base hit up the middle, wins it for the Mallards. Really good piece of hitting in a clutch situation. We mentioned he looked down to coach. There's no sign to give. Give me a knock. He did just that. Took the ball right back up the middle. Tunic with a do or die charge. In all honesty, he knew he had to get after it in a hurry. He had no chance. Could not come up with a baseball. The Mallards are playing for a title in what was an extremely exciting and well-played baseball game between two championship type of teams here today. We had two great semifinal games in 1A here this morning at Peoria. This is what it's supposed to look like when it's championship weekend. Game number one, Jabot held on against Goreville 7-6 to six after Goreville had scored two runs in the bottom of the seventh and left the bases loaded. And here, Henry Sinatrawine Packages three of their five hits back to back to back with two outs, and they will be playing for a state championship tomorrow morning. Your final score here in your second semi final game is Henry Sanatwine two, Newman Central Catholic one. Stick around, there's more baseball to be had. We're getting set for class 2A. Two great ones in 1A, 2A coming up next here on the NFHS Network.